Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Shelley. I'm the Clinic Director of Olympic Spine and Sports Therapy. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. Since you're watching this, you're probably experiencing chronic joint pain. Chronic joint pain isn't usually life-threatening, but it can rob you of your quality of life. It can impair your ability to work, it can keep you from enjoying your hobbies, make you a lot less fun to be around. If allowed to progress, it can even threaten your ability to function independently. Before I explain how we treat chronic joint pain, I want to give you a little information on my background. I'm a chiropractic physician. I've been in practice for over 30 years. I'm board certified in functional neurology, and I have hundreds of hours of training in manual medicine and physical rehabilitation. Equally important to my education is my personal experience with chronic joint pain. If you will, the school of hard knocks. Let me give you some highlights of that resume. I have a grade three separation of my left shoulder. I've had an avulsion fracture of my right shoulder. I fractured my right ankle, and we should have an image of my right hip showing a femur fracture. I'm gonna stop there because I don't want you to think I'm accident prone or something. These injuries are all self-inflicted. I enjoy testing my limits and developing new skills athletically. Skiing, snowboarding, and mountain biking have given me an enormous amount of pleasure and a significant amount of pain. I like to say that my pain has been for my patient's gain. I believe that my having experienced the same kind of problems my patients have is invaluable. I am personally highly motivated to find the best methods that exist to treat chronic joint pain because I experience it myself. I'm going to share those with you in this video. Before we explore that, I want to explain what we don't treat. We don't treat joint pain due to infections or gout or recent severe injuries like fractures. These conditions require treatment by other medical specialists, so see your primary care physician if you have any of those. Most often, chronic joint pain is due to an underlying biomechanical problem. By that, I mean alterations of normal loading, alignment, movement patterns, and stabilization that create pain and degeneration. Traditional options for chronic joint pain include treatments like rest and ice, physical therapy, over-the-counter medications, prescription painkillers and anti-inflammatories, injections, or surgery. The treatment approach we use at Olympic Spine and Sports Therapy is best described as functional neurologic orthopedic rehabilitation. Because it takes so long to say that, I'm going to use the abbreviation FNOR for short. After completing my diplomate studies in neurology, I enrolled in the FNOR Continuing Education Program. This series of seminars focused on new treatments for chronic spine and joint pain. The program was created and presented by a doctor of physical therapy and a chiropractic neurologist. Both have decades of experience working with outpatient orthopedic conditions. One of the things that made this program so powerful was the collaboration of different disciplines, sharing concepts from physical therapy and chiropractic, as well as orthopedics and neurology. That's taken us to a new level in the treatment of chronic joint pain. In addition to combining treatments from these disciplines, FNOR is a systems approach. It's built on the understanding that you can't look at just one joint in isolation. The most effective treatment approach looks at the, the whole picture. With this in mind, if you come to us with knee pain, we're going to evaluate your knee, but we're also going to evaluate your foot, your ankle, your hip, and your low back. And actually, it doesn't stop there. We're also going to evaluate your posture, your gait, your balance, and stability. This comprehensive assessment and treatment approach the functional neurologic orthopedic rehabilitation approach is key to the high success rate we have treating chronic joint pain. We often get results when traditional single joint focused treatment has failed. When someone comes to us in pain, our first priority is always to help them get relief as fast as possible. That being said, the only thing that's better than getting better is staying better. So we don't stop with pain reduction. We want to do as much as possible to correct the underlying cause of the pain and restore strength and stability. So the sequence the treatments are applied in is crucial. You can't put the cart before the horse. If you attempt to do advanced exercise before you reduce pain and restore proper motion, you'll get worse, not better. Treatment needs to be customized according to the individual patient's needs. With that understanding, I want to give you an overview of the treatments we use in our chronic joint pain treatment program. Treatment plans often include high-dose laser therapy, non-surgical joint decompression, chiropractic adjustments and joint mobilization, infrared light therapy, trigenics manual therapy, and integrated functional rehabilitation. 
I'm going to explain what each of these treatments is, what it does, and how it works in concert with the other therapies. Before I do that, though, up front, I want to address questions every prospective patient has. How long will it take to feel better? How many treatments will I need? How long will it take? How much will it cost? Of course, the most absolute sense, the answer to those questions is that it depends on the specifics for each patient. That being said, in general, patients suffering from chronic joint pain that are candidates for our program typically experience improvement within the first two weeks of starting treatment. Appointments using our comprehensive treatment approach usually take about one hour. Clinic sessions typically start at two to three days per week, then taper off to one visit per week. Most initial treatment plans last 90 days. Patients also receive instruction on how to support their in-office treatment with home care. Making time for home therapy is key to getting maximum improvement and having long-term results. Regarding cost, although treatment procedures we use like high-dose laser, decompression, and infrared therapy are FDA cleared, most insurance companies don't pay for them. Unfortunately, insurance is designed to pay for drugs and surgery. The bottom line is that most patients incur personal expense that runs into thousands of dollars. Most of the patients that come to us with chronic joint pain are willing to incur personal expense to get effective treatment without the use of drugs or surgery. Additionally, I think it's helpful to understand the procedure we use. We provide screening evaluations that are free of charge. That way we can let you know whether or not we can help you before you incur any expense. Another point I want to make is that we only continue treatment if the patient is getting results. We set specific measurable goals for treatment results that have to be attained in the first re-exam. Normally that re-examination occurs at the end of one month of treatment. That is the go, no-go point. You have to be able to tell us without hesitation your symptoms are improved and the object of testing has to back it up. The last point I want to make regarding finances is that we're used to working with our patients. Since most all of our patients are cash, we're used to making payment arrangements and working with them financially. Now that you have a general overview of the evaluation process, I want to explain the individual treatments and how they work. Often when people hear the word laser, they think about ones used for surgery. We don't use lasers that cut, we use lasers that heal. Our body can benefit from absorbing certain frequencies and wavelengths of light. Similar to the way a plant will absorb sunlight and convert it into energy for growth, our body can absorb near-infrared light and convert it into ATP. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is the energy currency of the cell. Higher levels increase the fuel available for cell function and can increase the rate of regeneration. In our experience, high-dose laser allows us to use more powerful therapies so we can get faster results. The fact that laser reduces inflammation and pain so you feel better is really a nice secondary benefit. Although decompression therapy is best known for treating back and neck problems due to herniated or degenerative discs, it also can be highly effective for chronic joint pain conditions. Knee pain, hip pain, as well as hand and arm pain due to carpal tunnel syndrome can benefit from non-surgical decompression. These joints are similar. They're classified as synovial. That means they're encapsulated by ligaments and they're filled with synovial fluid. With decompression, the ligaments are gently stretched. This creates a pumping effect to demonstrate, I'll use this model of a knee joint. You can see the internal structures, the meniscus and the ligaments, because the capsular ligament has been removed. The capsular ligament surrounds the entire joint, so when the decompression machine stretches the joint, it creates a vacuum. The negative pressure draws water and nutrients into the joint, and the pumping effect helps to remove waste products that cause inflammation. Decompression is not traction. Hanging upside down may stretch the joint, but it doesn't produce the pumping effect. With sophisticated decompression machines, we can control the rate of application of the force, the maximum and minimum force exerted, and the frequency of the cycle. In combination with our other therapies, decompression can be a game changer for chronic joint pain. First, let me set your mind at ease. We don't use forceful manipulation for chronic joint problems. If the picture that comes to mind is a doctor forcing a dislocated joint back in place, I want you to know we don't do that. 
We often use gentle joint mobilization or low force instrument or table adjustments. They should be virtually pain free. If any treatment causes pain, we don't use it. Let me explain one of the benefits of adjustment or mobilization. When a joint is injured or degenerates, often scar tissue forms in the muscle and ligaments around the joint. These are called periarticular adhesions. The scar tissue can limit motion and alter loading patterns, creating more degeneration and pain. Often, adjustments and mobilization can stretch and release these adhesions. To demonstrate this, I want you to meet Duane. We're going to assess uh, joint motion. We're going to look at the low back hip complex. So, Duane, what I'm going to have you do, give me a straight leg leg lift on this right side. Great, and down, and then do the same on the left side. And restricted there. Duane, could you feel the difference between the two of them? Yes, the left side is uh, a lot more restricted. So I'm going to have you do that again in reverse order. So raising left for us, and down, and then raising right for us. So clearly more on that right side. I'm going to go just a smidgen lighter on that. When the table stops, that produces shear force on the joint. That restores motion to the joint and stretches out those periarticular adhesions we talked about earlier. So I'm going to do a couple of those. Oh, uh, Dwayne, any pain with that? No. 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 It, it may look painful, but it's not. Good. <clears throat> and I'm going to have you lift. I'm going to pull that block out. So we're going to retest starting with the extension on this right leg. So give me a straight leg, leg lift right. As it was, very good. And then left. Gee, look at that. And that's what we consistently have seen with Dwayne. Following that adjustment in the trigenics, we've regained that lost motion. Yeah, that's, that is the goal, yeah. be, to become an unpatient. <laughs> Dwayne, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. My classes in functional neurology stress two components that are essential for healing to happen. They emphasize the necessity of having fuel and activation. Glucose and oxygen are fuel for our nerves. Activation is exercise. Infrared light therapy helps to feed the nerves and muscles by improving circulation. Research has shown that infrared therapy increases the production of nitric oxide. This in turn can accelerate the repair of blood vessels and nerves. Studies using infrared thermography demonstrate an improvement in circulation for two to three hours following a treatment. Infrared therapy is typically applied using pads to surround the joint. Treatments are pain-free. The only thing a patient feels is a relaxing, warm sensation. This makes infrared therapy a favorite treatment for our chronic joint pain patients. Trigenics is also known as myoneural manual medicine. Myo for muscle, neural for nerve, and manual for being performed by hand. Trigenics, as the name implies, consists of three procedures, resisted exercise, nerve receptor activation, and a neurologic breathing technique. Trigenics retrains the way the nerve system controls muscles associated with a joint. It can reduce pain, improve motion, restore strength and stability. Often the results are immediate and dramatic. Before I demonstrate a trigenics treatment, I want to explain how it works. When an injury occurs, our body goes into a protective mode. For example, if you sprain an ankle, it will swell up and the muscles around it will splint. They will tighten up to protect it from further injury. This is an appropriate and a necessary initial response. However, if the muscle contraction persists after the injury is healed, it can allow an acute injury to progress into a chronic degenerative condition. The same process occurs as a result of repetitive use disorders or from chronic postural stress. So you don't have to have an injury to get chronic joint pain. Regardless of the cause, the solution is the same. Joint motion and stability must be restored. Trigenics accomplishes this by retraining the way the nerve system controls the muscles associated with the joint. Trigenics is not a soft tissue technique. By that I mean it doesn't break up or stretch out scar tissue in the muscle. Treatments are applied to accomplish one of two objectives, to either lengthen shorten muscles or strengthen weakened muscles. Treatments work by changing the neurologic integration of the muscle. The lengthening treatment changes the length tension ratio of the muscle. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can Google topics like intrafusal and extrafusal muscle fibers and alpha gamma coactivation. 
I wanted to talk about these. My producer said you would fall asleep if I did. A treatment begins by examining the length and strength of muscles associated with the joint. The findings are noted and patterns are evaluated. From this, a sequence of treatments is determined. As an example, I'll demonstrate two treatments that are frequently used when dealing with chronic shoulder conditions. I'd like to introduce you to Judy. Judy is one of our all-star patients. Uh, she came to us with a laundry list of different symptoms, uh, neck pain and low back pain. Uh, on the top of the list, although today she's telling me she has some right shoulder problems, her left shoulder was a real trouble spot for her. Um, so with the treatments that we've used, we've focused on that left shoulder and using the Trigenics procedure to work to restore motion, to restore strength and stability. Uh, Judy has made huge improvement from where she started. Uh, intentionally for this video, I didn't let her get treatment for the last, what, uh, week or two weeks or something. She's a little unhappy with me about that, but it was to be able to demonstrate what the Trigenics procedure does, how the treatment works. Uh, so Judy's assessment, we found consistently restricted motion in certain planes with her left shoulder, and we're gonna demonstrate that next. So Judy, what I want you to do is raise this right arm up for us. Good. So her good arm, if you will, and down, and then do the same with the left, but stop where it gets tight or painful. So we're losing maybe 45 degrees of motion on that. You can bring that back down. Um, Judy, let's do this. I want you to swing around and face towards me. We're going to check motion with you reaching around like you're trying to scratch your shoulder. I want you to do that, the good, the right side first. Now I'll have you note how high she's able to get on that. Judy, bring that down, then come around with that left one. And you can see that's probably, you know, three inches difference on that. That's contraction in these muscles on the left side. Uh, last test, actually, Judy, I'm going to have you swing back around to this side for us. Those are assessments for decreased length of muscles. I want to demonstrate also reduced strength because of the shoulder problem. Uh, one of the things we found on her initial exam was weakness in the bicep long head muscle that runs here. So Judy, push up into my hand. Judy is strong. You don't want to mess with Judy. She's strong on the right side, pushing up, but on the left side, not so much. Okay, so we've identified specific muscle groups that we want to lengthen, specific muscle group, in this case the bicep, we want to strengthen. So we're going to start with our lengthening procedure. Judy, I'll have you swing around so your knees are on that side. So we're going to be working on lengthening her latissimus dorsi. I'm actually going to get in and work on her teres a little bit today too. Perfect. Judy's holding on to the side of the table. Trigenics, as I said, three procedures. We're working with resisted exercise. We're using nerve receptor activation. And the third component is a breathing exercise. So Judy is going to make a s sound. We want her exhaling the whole time that we're applying the treatment procedure. Uh, that shifts her neurologically into a parasympathetic state instead of sympathetic. What we don't want her doing is holding her breath while we're doing the treatment. So Judy, I'm gonna have you take a deep breath in and give me, as you push down into my hand, perfect, hold that pressure, that's just right. So I'm working on points in her latissimus dorsi and relax, good, and I'm gonna stretch. And in her teres muscle, take a deep breath. So Judy is pushing down into my hand with her elbow, contracting the muscle and relax, and then I'm stretching it. Again, breath. Great, Judy. Hold that for three, two, one, and relax. So activating the nerve receptors in the muscle, contraction, stretching. We're going to retest what that did for our length, but before we do, we're going to do our treatment to restore the strength of that bicep muscle. So Judy, let's have you stand for us. And I'm going to have you stand right next to me here. Perfect. So this one, Judy is a pro at this. We're going to keep those fingers open. Again, you're going to be pushing and you're going to rotate out when we get to the last. So for this procedure, the Trigenics strengthening procedure, strangely enough, we're going to have her use the opposite muscle, what's called the antagonist. 
So Judy is going to be firing her triceps muscle, which is extending her arm, while I'm working on the biceps muscle, particularly on the insertion points that are probably tender. Okay, I'll stop that. Deep breath. And start that twist. Excellent. And breath. And good. And twist. And twist. And twist. And relax. You doing okay? Uh-huh. One more. <gasps> Judy will tell you that this is not fun. Good. But it is effective, huh? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So there's our lengthening and our strengthening trigenics procedures. Now we're going to retest and see how we did. Judy, I'll have you take a seat. And as you did before, so this right side, I want you to give us adduction. Free it easy. And left side. Look at that, she comes to her head. Beautiful. Uh, let's demonstrate that, it's called scratch test too. Um, I'm gonna have you swing around. We'll go back and forth a little bit, but I wanna do it in the same sequence. So your right side, again as before, straighten that thumb out for me. There we go, great, and down. And now let's see how we did on the left side. And I'll move the, the crease in the shirt, you know, probably within a half of an inch. So nice gains in our motion. Now let's see how that did for strength. So I'm gonna have you swing around one more time to this side so we can test your bicep. So you are there and you're pushing up. Again, really strong and pushing up. And Judy now, really strong. Yep. So that's something you can't really see. It's something you more have to feel. That was a marked difference, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Judy, thank you so much for, for being willing to come and let us demonstrate. The last component of our comprehensive treatment is integrated functional rehabilitation. As I was saying, for Judy to have lasting results, we need to use a comprehensive treatment approach and she needs to do rehabilitation exercises. The reduction of pain, compression, and inflammation is always the first priority. This is represented by the red columns. Once the pain is reduced, we can shift to reactivate muscles that were shut down due to pain. Pain produces what is called neurogenic inhibition. When an area has been injured, the local muscles become weak and short. Local muscle contraction reduces motion, producing a splinting effect for the joint. Additionally, the force the muscles can generate from contraction is neurologically limited to prevent additional injury. This is beneficial directly following an injury. However, once the pain has been reduced, these neurologic restraints are no longer necessary. To promote recovery, we gently re-engage or reactivate the local muscles. For example, a reactivation exercise for chronic knee patients is a quad extension. Simply straightening your leg and contracting your thigh muscles helps to re-engage them. This reactivation phase is demonstrated by the gold columns. Once the muscles are back online, reactivation exercises should give way to more advanced functional therapies. These are indicated by the green columns. Initially, functional exercises are used to retain proper joint motion and muscle activation sequences. That's the order the muscles fire in to produce smooth, coordinated movement. When a relatively normal joint motion is possible, the patient can be progressed to force control training. The goal here is to retrain your body to be able to cope with real-world dynamic environments and ultimately build endurance. Endurance can be defined as control over time. It must be dynamic to fit our real-world requirements. To develop control and endurance, we use balanced challenging devices like wobble boards, foam pads, and BOSUs. You're probably familiar with these rehab devices. You're probably not familiar with a highly effective device called the center force bar. The center force bar is a tube that has balls inside. When you move the tube, the balls roll, and this changes the force transmitted into your arms, spine, and legs. This creates a continuously variable force that requires dynamic stabilization of the joints. If you'd like more detailed information about integrated functional rehabilitation, you can find it on the website. So, why do we use all of this? The short answer is, this is what we have found to be the most effective treating chronic joint pain. There's a, a synergy by combining these therapies. It has the effect of multiplying the benefit of the treatments. Aristotle said it this way, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. According to current research, the best treatment transitions from pain reduction to muscle reactivation 
and ultimately integrated functional rehabilitation. This is what we have modeled our chronic joint pain treatment program after. This is why we use the combination of therapies that we do. High dose laser therapy to speed tissue recovery, non-surgical joint decompression to reduce inflammation and pump nutrients back into the joint, adjustments and mobilization to restore proper joint motion and reduce pain, infrared light to boost circulation and assist tissue regeneration, trigenics to reduce pain and regain muscle strength for joint stability, and integrated functional rehabilitation to restore control and endurance so you get results that last. Chronic joint pain can be a complex, frustrating condition. Simple conditions will often respond to simple treatments. Complex conditions often require comprehensive treatments. That's why we provide the broad scope of treatments we do. Most patients that come to us have tried medication, injections, and physical therapy. Some have even tried surgery or stem cell injections and didn't get the results they were looking for. I'm glad to say we've helped thousands of patients get results, even when other treatments have failed. Of course, getting treatment before the condition has progressed too far is critical. There comes a point when the degeneration is so severe, surgery may be the only option. That being said, we have had hundreds of patients that were told surgery was their only option that did get results with treatment, and they're thrilled they didn't have to have surgery. It seems like every week we hear patients say things like, I wish I'd learned about your office sooner. Yes, you can live with chronic joint pain, but why? For some of our patients, it's cost them their job or limited their ability to work. One patient that comes to mind is a contractor. Because of his chronic shoulder pain, there were jobs he couldn't take because he couldn't do the work. For some patients, the effects of chronic joint pain are less obvious. Recently, I had a patient tell me how much better her life was since she could sleep. She went on to explain that before treatment, every time she rolled over in bed, her shoulder pain caused her to wake up. She said she was grumpy because she felt worn out all the time. Another patient, who just finished his treatment plan, told me that before treatment, the longest he could stand was about 15 minutes. Now he said he can stand for over an hour, and then the pain is only mild, not unbearable. I can go on and on about patients that have been able to get back to their recreational activities and hobbies, enjoy travel again, or patients that were losing their ability to live independently that now can do normal household chores and daily activities. These aren't life-threatening consequences, but they do rob people of their quality of life. As I said before, we've helped thousands of patients find relief and regain their ability to do life. We've done this using the comprehensive treatment procedures I described. Treatments without drugs, without injections, or surgery. Treatments that are safe, that are effective and pain-free. Will these treatments work for you? The only way to know is to be evaluated. We've made it easy for you to find out if you're a candidate for treatment. We offer a consultation and screening evaluation free of charge. Most of the patients that come to us are skeptical because they've tried other treatments that weren't successful. I want to emphasize that we don't use a typical approach in treatment. To my knowledge, we offer the most advanced, comprehensive treatment approach that is available in Puget Sound. If you're tired of living with pain and the way it limits your life, call us and schedule an evaluation. I can say from firsthand experience, life is better with less pain and more mobility. I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope it encourages you to continue to look for solutions for your chronic joint pain. Feel free to call us if there's any way we can be of help.